This week on The Climb, success for running back Zach Line comes with a price. Tom Mason takes us inside the defensive huddle. Sterling Moore talks about his battles with injury. And SMU wins one that matters. What more can you say about Zach Line? Line has emerged as one of the top running backs in the nation. If a picture is worth a thousand words, Line's 2010 highlight reel could fill Bondren Library. And here's another delay handoff, and there's a big hole left side for Line. 35, 40. Nice move to the 45, and an ankle tackle by Alex Ibiloye. Zach Line, the blockers in front of him, has the first down across the 42 to 30. Padron's going to hand this one off. Zach Line has a big hole right side. Second touchdown tonight. Against Marshall, Line enjoyed a career day. He carried 30 times. That's right, 3 0 for 202 yards, tying him with Wayne Morris, number eight, SMU's all time single game list. He also broke the 1,000 yard mark for the season. But for Line to get his yards, the O line has to open the lanes. When a running back posts gaudy stats, he doesn't do it alone. So to mark the occasion, Line took his O line out to dinner. And to protect his pocketbook, he chose a Dallas landmark, Celebration, a restaurant famed for its home cooking and all-you-can-eat portions. Before the UTEP game, I told him we got over a thousand yards. So I take him out to dinner. Has anybody seen Inception yet? It's nice. I mean, this is just a good gesture. I mean, but we, you know, we would do the same thing for him. I mean, this a lot of times he done saved our butts. So you know, we, we make sure we take care of him anytime he's out with us. <laughs> Exactly, yeah, you can tell them every time in the huddle, good job, you know, I love you, thank you for doing that, or here you can take him out to dinner. Best way to align his heart is through his stomach. Sterling Moore's year hasn't gone as planned. The senior sports management major from Oakland, California is a leader, and more importantly, a playmaker. He's a kid that, he provides leadership there, he's an experienced player, um, You've got confidence as a coordinator when he's on the field that you can call things and, and you're not worried about other teams going after him. I mean, uh, hands down, he's just you know the, the definition of a shutdown corner, you know what I mean? For whatever reason, I think our defense plays with a, a different level of confidence when he's in there. He brings experience and stability to the defensive backfield, but injuries have kept him off the field, forcing him to miss five games. Uh, it's definitely been a frustrating year. Um, you know, it's not how I expected it to go. It, in the aspect of on the field play, I'm, I'm happy with what I've done, but you know, it's kind of frustrating that I've been hurt twice. I got the quarterback. Yeah, he's a true competitor, and so you can just tell through the time that he was off, you know, really putting in the extra hours in his rehab that he's a hard worker, and so you just saw that in his efforts during his rehab time, you know, just uh, really putting in the time so he can get healthy and get back to his teammates, and uh, that, show, that shows a lot about his character. It was one of those things I kind of had to push through, and, and it's, it's all about your mindset. You know, if you're strong-minded, then you'll be all right. If not, then you know, you kind of just fade away, but uh, it's one of those things I really had to push through. Still, he has persevered, patiently enduring his rehab, waiting for a return to the field that came on senior day against Marshall. And Rush, Anderson delivers across the middle there, Sterling Moore. I finally came back and got to play on senior day, but, uh, you know, my parents don't get to come out and watch me play often, so, you know, I was glad that, you know, I was able to play when they did come. I just wanted to look back and say Sterling Moore is a guy who, you know, fought through adversity and came back and was, you know, really for the team. Next up, Tom Mason breaks down the action on the defensive side of the ball.
JD, fill out covers all. Let's get this right. SMU defensive coordinator Tom Mason boasts an impressive collegiate resume with stops at Eastern Washington, Portland State, Boise State, Northern Iowa, Nevada, and Fresno State. Last year, he changed the defense from a 4-3 to a 3-4. He visited with the climb about a variety of topics, ranging from preparation to defensive mentality. Where's two? Question one. When do you start there. preparing for an opponent? Right it starts on Wednesday. The graduate assistant, he puts everything in the computer, so he'll break it down by down and distance, hash mark, uh, formation, personnel groupings, and then uh, when he's got all the data in, and then we'll make cut-ups of every formation by personnel groupings, by down and distance, by hash. And usually what I do is I'll put a preliminary game plan together Sunday night. Then when I watch the cut-ups, I'll make some decisions on it. Uh, and then when we meet with the kids on Tuesday, we'll have a preliminary game plan ready to go, decide what blitzes we're going to use, how we think we can take advantage of certain schemes that they do, and, and stop them. If it's going to hit, no, next play. If it's going to hit on us, it's going to hit in the seat. Question two, how long does it take before players start to really pick up an opposing team's offensive scheme? Somebody's out of gap. Usually for us, it's uh, Wednesday. You know, they're going to come in and, and watch a lot of film on their own. They're going to watch film with us as coaches, have position meetings. The biggest thing you can't do is you can't change a lot of what you do. You're going to make little tweaks here or there for various opponents, and then uh, the players will pick it up, and by Wednesday they usually have it. By Thursday you're fine-tuning it. Uh, Friday you work a little bit of compete zone stuff, and uh, if they don't have it by Friday, you better throw it out because they're not going to have it on Saturday. Question three. What traits do you look for in a player to best suit your 3-4 scheme? Well, the biggest thing I look for in defense, I don't look for size, I look for speed. You know, we're going to be a pressure defense, 3 fours built on speed. Um, when I'm looking for players, I'm looking for what I could just football players, guys that are making plays. Uh, but speed's the one factor that I got to have. You want size in your D-line, but those guys are hard to find. So if you're going to substitute anyway, substitute for speed. Question four, would you consider yourself an aggressive defensive team? Well, what we want to do is we want to be a pressure defense. We want offenses to fear that we're going to blitz every snap. The thing that we want to build it around is we want to dictate to the offense what they can do. Uh, you know, I've always said my goal when I walk out, walk out on that field on Saturday is that big sheet of paper that offensive coordinator's got all of a sudden shrinks to about four or five plays. And, and then when I can figure out what plays he's trying to do, then I can adjust our defense. The kids really are bought into the fact that they enjoy playing in this defense because it's high pace, it's, uh, it's high pressure. We're going to make some big plays. Uh, it's going to be exciting to play in it. Question five. Are you pleased with how the defense has played this year? Yeah, so far I think we've played uh, very well up to expectations. You know, we turned, turned into the number one defense in the conference going into it this week, and uh, our goal was to be in the top 50 uh, defenses in the country. It's a process of kids understand the system, getting your system in place, and uh, the kids believe in what you're doing. Question six, do you see the players putting in extra effort to improve their play? Yeah, and that's one of the things that working in this defense, I really try to make it player friendly so that the players come in, spend time with their coaches, or and, but they like to come in and they like to sit down and talk, and, and that's when you know you're going to be pretty good when the players take ownership of the defense. and. And they like to come in and find out what, what we're thinking. And, and, and that's really helped. When we first got here, the players never came to coaches' offices. Now, sometimes I got to kick them out of there so I can get my work done. Question seven. How do you plan to stop ECU's high-powered offense? Well, ECU's a great offense. I think they're in, right now they're ranked number uh, five in the country in offense. But again, Conference USA, you're going to see probably three of the top five offenses in the country as the season goes. Uh, they want to throw the football. They, they're capable of running the football. They're going to be explosive. They've got good, uh, skilled athletes. Their quarterbacks are very efficient. You know, the key to the game is going to be try to slow down their passing attack. Don't let them get a lot of run after catch and, uh, and create some turnovers. Next up, a win over East Carolina puts the Mustangs in the Conference USA Championship game. Is SMU up to the challenge?